occasions meshing with inflation and hex dominant mesh so if i just generate the mesh for this object i will see there is a fully tetra mesh okay so just i'll give sizing for this volume entire solid for body one i give sizing of 3 mm the 3 mm will be for this entire body then i just generate the mesh now if you see it is a uniform mesh and it is fully tetra mesh now what i'll do is i'll just try to insert inflation for this object so for that i will just go to mesh insert and then this inflation for inflation i need to pick the volume in which inflation will go and the surface from which inflation will start now there are some options for inflation from which i generally use this thick total thickness and first layer thickness so first we will use a total thickness so this is a this is the total thickness we need to provide let me choose 5 mm as a total thickness of inflation the number of layers are 5 and growth rate from one cell to other the ratio is 1.2 now with this if I generate the mesh you will see Yeah, there is an inflation. So this total thickness is 5 mm and there are 5 layers. Now we can see this inflation in cross section also. So let me let me put let me choose the section new section plane and I just need to pick a line like this so it will cut here and you can see the cross section of the mesh now if i go to these sections and if i mix on now it will be solid so you can see the solid elements so this is the inflation layer now suppose i change it to a first layer thickness the first thickness i can provide as a 0.3 mm so i provide a 0.3 mm as a first layer will be of 0.3 mm and this ratio is 1.2 and there will be 5 layers so accordingly it will generate a mesh for that so if you see the final mesh yeah this is the final inflation layer so this first cell is uh, 0.3 mm first cell is 0.3 mm and there are following number of cells and ratio is 1.2 Similarly, I can provide this inflation to other faces also. Like, I'll just press Control, and I have again inserted two extra faces. I'll generate the mesh. So you'll see the inflation from all along these faces. Yes. So this is a cross section and you can see the inflation from all the pieces which we have selected now uh, this is about the inflation and inflation is mainly used in theory applications to capture the boundary layer so this is extensively used in theory applications now let's move to uh, hex dominant mesh with hex dominant mesh we can't use inflation let's see I just use the insert method and I remove this cross section now remove this cross section uh, 
Just remove this texture, man. Okay. Now uh, I'll change. I'll select this geometry and change this method from automatic to hex dominant. Our inflation is off now. So we can't use inflation with hex dominant method. Let's see how the mesh is generated with hex dominant. So first it generates triangular mesh, tetra mesh, and then converts these tetras to hex. So it is now converting this try to quartz. Yeah, this is a hex dominant mesh. You can see it has tried most of elements using hex, but somewhere it has also put the pyramids. Now, if you see the cross section of this mesh, I will see. It has generated fine quality elements outside, but at the core, uh, it, it has not generated hexas. It has managed with uh, tetrahedrals, and so uh, keep in mind that although it is hex dominant, at core you will find tetrads. So this hex dominant measure is generally prepared for small thickness objects, not for objects like this where thickness and length ratio are same, like this thickness, oral thickness and this length are near about the same. So for this it is not prepared, so wherever there is a small thickness objects, you can use hex dominant mesh, so it will definitely mesh. mostly with hex elements and tetras will be eliminated so with this i finish this tutorial thank you